Good morning, and thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, Brother Laddie and Sister Kate, we're going to need some wine. <laughs> and more than five minutes. Thank you for sharing your, your Lagos experience. And, and may I kindly share the South African experience. And to your point, Kate, what works in Lagos will not necessarily work in South Africa and vice versa. So Uber started in South Africa in 2013. And it was the first country out of, outside of the US to have three cities operating at the same time. We are currently operating in eight cities and we're about to launch four more in mid-December in what we call the Garden Route. We have over 679,000 active monthly riders and 90% of those have never used a traditional meter taxi before. So the majority of our market is a private car user. And this is the one hard nut we've cracked because in South Africa, private car users have been termed stubborn market because they refuse to get out of their private cars onto the public transport. We haven't solved all the problems, but I think it's a great start. And the next level would probably be now teach them to share rides. If you can sit next to a stranger from South Africa to here, for five hours, there's no reason why you can sit to a, next to a stranger for a five, 10 minute trip. Over 12,000 active monthly partner drivers. These are drivers on the platform that are driving for themselves as independent operators. 30% or slightly less of those are under the age of 35. 30% of those come from the traditional meter taxi industry. We have 82 nationalities that have used Uber and we get this information from our airport statistics. Just in terms of improving mobility in South Africa, I'm not gonna go through everything, five minutes is not enough. We have expanded options in underserviced areas in South Africa. There was a point where calling for an Uber in, in, in Soweto to queue, the ETA was about tw 20 minutes, it's now less than five minutes. We are complementing, uh, we are complementing the existing public transport infrastructure, but as well as competing with it to some extent. And we've upskilled our driver partners and we, we, it's, we can never have a 100% safe system, but I think it's fairly as uh, safe in comparison. This is a slide I wanna spend more time on. There's a study that was done by the IFC and it was termed driving towards equality. Women ride sharing in the sharing economy. Please do uh, have a look at it in detail. We asked women drivers in South Africa what was attractive to them in terms of joining the platform. But let me start with who drives. 3%, 3.8% of our drivers on the platform are women, and 19% were unemployed before using Uber. And what motivates them to drive? 67% of women drivers surveyed cited flexibility and good money comes second. This is contrary to our male driver partners who are driving primarily, and this is our primary source of income rather. And when, when do women drive? In South Africa, they drive twice as many hours per week on average as their peers across the markets. And what do they earn? They've had a 14% on average additional income per month. We can unpack this because it talks to the disparities between men and women, and that's a discussion for another day. Now let's go to the women as, as riders in South Africa. 45% of our riders in South Africa are females and 51% cite knowing the driver's details and the details of the car as the major benefit. And 38% uh, cite the shared trip functionality where you can share your trip with the family. There's also a 10% of them that said, until such services came, they never used to travel at night and so much for having a freedom of movement. And how does ride sharing compare with alternatives? 56% of women strongly believe that trips with Uber are faster and more convenient. Please have a look at this at your own spare time. I wanna go to some of the most important slides. What are the risks uh, in terms of these services? I think from a government perspective, this, it's said that there's a lack of, uh, lack of capacity to, to fulfill its role. I don't really think there's a lack of capacity in government. There's a lot of people that are suitably qualified to be in that space and a whole lot of women at it. There are, however, competing priorities. When you talk about government and their priorities, innovation and technology is not at the top of the list. Slow to respond to emerging trends and outdated policies. As a result, this gives us another threat, which is the market and its agility to respond to, to demands from the market. 
and obviously they are demand driven and we are forever ahead of government in most cases. This is what creates tensions between the private sector and the public sector. And as always, the consumer is always stuck in the middle. Now let's quickly talk about, we've got one minute, equality. I'll, I'll grab my one minute. <laughs> the South African policy is under review and it has identified e-hailing as a service. They've given the con conditions which are similar to taxes. There are three things we are worried about in the main. One is the punitive clause. It says that as an e-hailing company, if you facilitate a ride with an operator that doesn't have an, an e-hailing license, you then get a fine up to 100,000 rand. Our problem is not the fine. Our problem is making it easy for us to comply. So in other words, if the process says when you apply for an operating license, you should get it in three months, Three months it should be, not three years, which is the current state. Vehicle markings, you can mark those cars pink, blue, yellow, we don't care. But we've seen the most, the heaviest assault on driver partners from driver, uh, so, so, tra traditional meter taxes. So we're saying when the time is right, mark them whichever way you want, but right now is not the time. Area restrictions talk to the old way of doing things vis-a-vis -vis an on-demand service, and I think it's very important that we look at the future uh, of mobility. Last but not least, it's very important that we learn to collaborate. Exploring shared value, data sharing. We've built a very nice system that shares data. It is hardly ever used. Knowledge sharing and planning for the future and not reacting to the present day. I have 30 seconds. Thank you.